what are attackers doing? Uh, social engineering is, is probably the most prevalent type of attack. Um, there's a, a, a phrase called come and get it. Uh, an attacker can send spam, can send IRC messages, instant messages with URLs in them saying uh, uh, your, email is, your email system is full. Click here for the, for the solution. Uh, click here for a virus update. Click here for a Windows update. Uh, click here for a pornography viewer. Uh, there's lots of ways to entice people to click. As I'm going to illustrate here, people don't need that much enticement, it turns out. So the victim of uh, phishing is a common term, and I think I got the Spanish wrong here, pardon me, but uh, uh, a phishing attack um, uh, is a type of social engineering. Typically, the attacker will uh, offer up a URL and try to misdirect the user to a website that looks a lot like their bank account or looks a lot like uh, their eBay uh, uh, login page, try to steal login credentials. Uh, but this is all social engineering. This is all, here's a URL, try to please click on it. Yes, the victim must take action, uh, but you know what virus has it spread by, uh, uh, people are still clicking on attachments and email still running on it. Um, so clicking on a URL, I'd say, is a much uh, much lower bar for an attacker to have to meet. And, and really, if we consider the bagel example, uh, not only will attackers, uh, will users click on a URL or an attachment, they will open an archive, a zip archive and an attachment that's password protected, enter the password, and run the executable inside. So clicking on a URL is not, by any means, uh, uh, a significant um, a significant hurdle for the attacker to have to overcome. People can do and will click on URLs. Uh, an incident note we published in 2002, uh, and this is talking about, uh, this incident note covers uh, URLs distributed in, in chat channels, and the impact here was uh, dial of service agents being installed. Uh, strong evidence that tens of thousands of systems were compromised, and that's just this one uh, collection of incidents. So there's every indication that uh, people are clicking on the URLs, and this would be a successful attack uh, in, a, in a high percentage uh, number of cases. What's at risk here? Um, if you're not running as administrator, if you're actually running with user privileges, uh, and an attack can't fully compromise the system, uh, an attacker might go after, this is, this is based on some common attacks, uh, financial information, bank account information, passwords, uh, other personal information you might transmit to or from the website um, by installing an agent on your system. Uh, an attacker might consume bandwidth, might give you some liability for a downstream attack. If there's a denial of service bot on your machine and you're attacking someone else unknowingly, you, you still may be traced back as part of the attack. Uh, system performance and stability, a lot of this software is badly written. It can cause uh, your system to crash, behave oddly, behave badly. Uh, it'll lag. Uh, attention economy is a phrase I like. Uh, how much spam do you want to read? How many pop-ups do you want to see in a day? How many advertisements? How much porn? Uh, a lot of the attacks install spyware and adware, uh, spam proxies. So uh, uh, even if your system is still stable and your bandwidth is usable, you might be up for uh, significantly more ads and spam than you were uh, the day before the attack happened. In a lot of cases, and especially in the case of a, of a home user, uh, I believe the default uh, Windows XP uh, behavior is that the first person to log into the box is administrator or has administrative privileges. Uh, most people are running with administrative privileges, something we certainly do not recommend. However, uh, this is what, what happens. So in most cases, an attacker is able to completely compromise the system and not just steal user information. Uh, in, in the case of a cross-domain attack, as mentioned with administrative privileges, uh, the attacker can distribute anything they want. It can be as relatively benign as spyware or adware. Uh, uh, it can be a proxy that allows spam to go through the machine. It can be any virus, any backdoor, any Trojan horse, uh, dial of service agent, remote control agent, absolutely anything the attacker wants to deliver. So, well, what, what advice can, can CERT or anyone give you? Uh, there's, there's obviously uh, keep patching, maintain up-to-date systems. Um, in essence, it, it's a losing battle. However, uh, it, it's certainly the, the least anyone can do. Um, in a lot of cases, the window between 
uh, one thing we try to do actually on the vulnerability side of things in CERT is, is reduce or eliminate the window between uh, information about the vulnerability being public and uh, a good fix from the vendor being available. So if that window is reduced and uh, a Microsoft bulletin comes out and information about the vulnerability comes out the same day, uh, patching quickly is going to most likely save you. If there's a post bug track ahead of time, and there's some number of days before the patch comes out, uh, our expectation is that attackers will start taking advantage of this very quickly in a matter of days. Um, so again, the, the pat patching is always a, fundamentally a losing battle in some ways. Uh, we typically recommend disabling scripting and ActiveX controls, uh, especially in the internet zone. Um, what, what has been determined to be actually also very effective is to, to disable these technologies in the local machine zone. Uh, and as was mentioned earlier uh, by our Microsoft representative, uh, Windows XP Service Pack 2 is going to make the trade-off between uh, breaking some functionality and breaking some applications and programs uh, versus security. Um, uh, scripting and ActiveX will be off in the local machine zone. So if there is uh, the next cross-domain vulnerability and attackers jump all over it, uh, until the patch is available, uh, when script is downloaded and tried and executed within the local machine zone, it will not run, is the idea, because it's disabled in that zone. So uh, I'm very happy to see this in XP Service Pack 2, uh, and I believe, and I believe Microsoft believes it well, that it will uh, greatly mitigate and reduce the effects of attacks. It will not stop vulnerability from existing or being discovered, but it, it may do a, go a long way towards preventing uh, attackers from getting anything out of that vulnerability. You know, security is not 100% of anything. There's a, there's a trade-off. Um, security is going to break things. It's going to make your life a little bit harder, uh, a little bit less interoperable, a little bit less full-featured maybe. Um, but it's a decision you have to make. Um, do you value security over the, over the features and the benefits? Um, you need to strike your own balance.